We're back from break on the InfoWars Nightly News, and ladies and gentlemen, this is an exciting time to be alive. As Dickens wrote, it's the best of times, it's the worst of times, mm -hmm. and it's very clear the Obama administration is following in the footsteps of Clinton, trying to achieve a total gun disarmament. They're going to piecemeal it, come at it from a thousand different strokes of the pen, of any laws they can get passed, but it's overall totally unconstitutional, and there are a number of people in this country who recognize that and are trying to to uphold and keep their oath to the Constitution and say no to that intrusion, that infringement on our sacred and protected Second Amendment right. One of the leaders for decades on that issue is Sheriff Richard Mack. We've had him in studio many times before, but he joins us again, and it's such a great time to see him. Thanks for coming in, Sheriff. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, you're right. It is the best of times and the worst of times, and it's such a huge opportunity for the American people to stand and be counted and stop what uh, this tyrant in Washington, D.C. is doing by the name of uh, Obama, or I don't know his name. Do, do we all know his name? Oh, I don't Barry think we've Sotero. had the proper background check. I don't know, yeah. Barry Sotero. Anyway, it's the first president that I think we've ever had, uh, or first person that we've ever had uh, assume the White House uh, who had a, an alias, an AKA. And uh, boy, he just keeps acting like uh, a criminal, and he uh, is so lawless. And I'm amazed that some people say, well, well like this... Um, female sheriff from uh, Oregon who says, we don't get to pick and choose. Well, then tell Barack Obama that he doesn't get to pick and choose which laws. He has to go by the Bill of Rights. It's the supreme law. And then he doesn't uh, abide by the oath of office that he's taken. He doesn't abide by the, the Constitution. He does not follow the Bill of Rights. He does not respect the Second Amendment. And we're supposed to support him? An actual county sheriff say we're supposed to go along with that? And she criticizes other sheriffs who are telling uh, Obama and Biden, no, you're not going to do that in my county. That's what we're supposed to do. And yes, we've been doing this for decades, and it's very gratifying to see the sheriffs that are standing against this in the country. They're good men. Uh, there's some women, I believe, that are also going to do this. There's only about 13 female sheriffs in the country, mm -hmm. but I believe that they're going to take a strong stand with us on this. But regardless of, of what sheriffs are and are not, we have dozens of sheriffs doing this every day. We're getting more and more sheriffs on board. Uh, they're calling us, us at uh, CSPOA at our offices, and we're just inundated with calls, people wanting to support these sheriffs, people wanting their sheriffs to do it. Oh, please call my sheriff and get him on board. No, you've got to call your sheriff and get him on board. This is up to you. This is why it's such a grassroots movement to get everybody on board on this. And this has been your main movement for so long. I want to make sure yeah. any new viewers, anyone who's not been paying attention is caught up to speed mm -hmm. on this. Okay. First of all, Obama, Feinstein, you name it, were pursuing gun control long before Sandy Hook. It's on record. Yeah. Everybody sees right through that hoax, but they're on the backs of this tragedy trying to tell us that our rights, our constitution have to be given up because of a single incident, because of these tragedies, because bad people do bad things. Right. Uh, when so many other people obey the law and have guns for the right reasons. Right. Then as a response to that, though, as a response to this clear encroachment on our rights, we've seen sheriffs, police chiefs standing up yeah. and saying they will not infringe on the Second Amendment. Yeah. And it, it started, the first issue I saw was police chief Mark Kessler. He's from a very small town in Pennsylvania uh, called Gilberton, and he introduced the Second Amendment uh, protection ordinance. We have a clip from that right now. Well, Dave, uh, uh, the, the, basically the uh, ordinance uh, slash resolution uh, is to recognize the Second Amendment and the uh, Constitution of the United States and the uh, Section 21 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, which states the right to keep and bear, bear arms shall not be questioned. Uh, basically, what, we're tr what I'm trying to do is have our council uh, in the borough of Gilberton uh, recognize the Second Amendment and uh, that they're, they're going to stand behind me and stand behind the citizens of the United States and the Second Amendment and uh, that they're not going to infringe on the Second Amendment uh, regarding any state, local, or federal laws, rules, or regulations that may or may not come down uh, from the, uh, uh, the elites in Washington, I guess you could call them. Now, what prompted you to do this? Everything that's going on right now uh, in Washington with all of the uh, uh, the bureaucrats uh, that are making such a mess and causing such a hornet's stir 
over uh, one man's act of evil uh, uh, up in Connecticut uh, uh, to those poor innocent children. And they're laboring, labeling everybody, uh, law-abiding gun owners, as criminals now. And I, I felt I, I, I needed to do something uh, to make a stand and let it be known that uh, this is not going to go over very well with me. Uh, and uh, I hope I can speak with more. Uh, I hope I can speak for the majority of law enforcement officials out there. Uh, they should stand behind the Constitution, and they should stand behind the Second Amendment, and the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And I don't understand what part of that that these uh, politicians uh, in Washington don't <clears throat> get. And that, of course, is Police Chief Mark Kessler, and it's so exciting, but we were talking about how police chiefs, it's good, they need to stand up, they need to recognize that our oath is to the Constitution, Correct. and he's definitely an oath keeper, but yep. then we started here from sheriffs, and, and just in a nutshell, explain why that is so important. Well, it's important because it's the constitutional American Republic that we live in, and uh, Jefferson and Madison both expressed in their resolutions, the Kentucky and Virginia resolutions, that local officials are actually duty-bound to interpose their power to prevent their citizens and their constituents from being victimized by the federal government. That was way back in the 1770s that, that our two founding fathers, our, our two most uh, expert constitutional scholars, warned us that we would have to do this against uh, the federal government. And now we have the president. Uh, sheriff Simpson from Oregon, who's criticizing other sheriffs and chiefs for doing this, let me guess. Uh, could you perhaps maybe be a liberal Democrat? Uh, let's see, is that why you're supporting uh, Barack Obama on this? It is Barack Obama who is not following the law. We are challenging him, and we're protecting local citizens. And for anybody to, to say it's okay for us to pretend what Barack Obama is doing is okay. It's okay for us to exploit a horrible tragedy of, of murder and mayhem so that we can promote a communist agenda to take guns away from law-abiding citizens. That is absolutely shameless and it's wrong and we now have sheriffs doing the right thing and this is exactly what a constitutional republic was meant to be. We side with the, the Bill of Rights, we side with liberty, and we side with the people. Sheriff Simpson, who are you siding with? And he's talking about this article that came out today. The headline is Benton Sheriff Won't Join Protests Against New Gun Measures. And it's Benton County's Diana Simpson. And yeah. for all these constitutional sheriffs standing up and saying, no, we're going to keep our oath. We're not going to be mothered by the feds. Right. You've got one or two sheriffs trying to poison the well. Yeah. Uh, but it's not going to stop them because we're reaching a critical point. This is the path that you've paved, as other sheriffs have pointed out to you. And I've noticed here on this show, we've talked about it many times. Yes. And then last week, we had Sheriff Denny Payton from Jackson County, Kentucky, stand up and say just that. A, he's not going to take the guns. B, he has a right to kick the feds out. He has the yep. right to kick the uh, the yep. state officials out. And if yep. they do anything to violate the Second Amendment, that's not going to fly. Uh, let's roll the first of those clips right now. You're never going to pull a gun from Jackson County. I can't get there quick enough to help those people. My best help to them is to let them keep their fire on. I can't do it for the other counties. I can't stand up for them, but I can't stand up for my people. And, you know, I was one of the first people to say, I, I think they need to arm school teachers. Not all of them, but they need, there's somebody that needs to have a weapon there. If Obama passes this, it doesn't matter what he passes. The sheriff has more power than the, than the federal people. They need to go back and they study that. We're a commonwealth. <laughs> I can ask the federal people to leave. They have to leave. How many I times have I said that? Leave, they have mm -hmm. to leave. <laughs> And you were saying, how many times have you said that? Of course, it's true. I mean, it's it is. It's on my website. The, sh the sheriff is the ultimate authority in his county. Uh, the sheriff does not report to the president. He does not report to the United States Congress. He does not report to some bureaucrat for the EPA or FDA. He reports to the people who put him in office. And the ultimate power is we the people. In America, that's how it's supposed to work. 
Well, I agree. And Alex had the sheriff on the show a couple days ago, and he recommended he should run for Congress. Of course, that makes sense to to carry the banner and be an icon for standing up for the Constitution. But actually, most of these congressmen are so malleable, yeah. so bought off by these interests, yeah. the sheriff can stand up individually as an you know an army of one, not to get physical, right. not to get violent, but right. to dr draw the line in the sand and say this is not going to happen. I'm glad you brought that up because this is not a call to arms. This, in fact, what we can do with the sheriffs doing this is guarantee that this movement will remain peaceful. That's another thing I've said the whole time. This is the solution, my dear friends. You're seeing it in action. And, you know, the even the National Sheriff's Association agreed with uh, Sheriff Simpson. Oh, you know, we, we, we don't want to cause uh, uh, ruffle any feathers, and, and we need to go along with these people. And, oh, yeah, we're, we don't really work for the federal government, and we don't enforce federal laws per se, but, w you know, we need to set a good example. These people are all bought off. And, you know, they get millions of dollars from the federal government and grants and, you know, they try to bribe them with all these grants and whatnot. But the, the, the thing of it is we're seeing sheriffs that are really concerned. None of these sheriffs wanted this fight. I didn't want the fight when I took on the Clintons. But they bring it to us and we have to defend freedom. That's why we took the oath. And for Sheriff Simpson to say, we don't have to keep our oaths. We just have to enforce whatever the federal government says. That's an absolute lie. It's wrong. And I really admire these sheriffs are standing. I talked to Sheriff Mueller, who's standing. I talked to Sheriff um, Pyman from Kentucky, who are standing. I talked to Sheriff uh, Palmer. Sheriff Palmer, who's, who probably made the, the best letter of all of these, said he will not tolerate any of this gun control in his county. He's right. He's absolutely right. And guess who was our Sheriff of the Year for the CSPOA? And folks, we want you to get involved with our CSPOA. Go to CSPOA.org. I hope you'll have that up on the screen. I know you'll have it on your website. But this is where we've been making all of this happen. And if you want to support this movement for freedom at the local level, forget about Washington, D.C. These sheriffs are proving that this is the solution, that we can make Washington, D.C. tyranny irrelevant. And we take back America county by county and sheriff by sheriff. It is the solution, and that's the Constitutional Sheriffs and Police Officers Association. Yep. And A, you've got a new DVD from a big conference you had last year with, what, over 100 sheriffs? Yes, uh, we've had and two conventions with now over 160 sheriffs in attendance. A lot of these sheriffs who, who are uh, standing were at our convention. Many of them uh, are, are coming on board uh, just as fast as they can. A lot of them are calling now and said, hey, we wanted to come to your convention, and, and how do we get involved in the next? We literally have sheriffs asking us, when's the next CSPOA convention? And uh, a lot of these people are speaking. These sheriffs are actually the speakers and the ones uh, presenting the truth at our conventions. And, and what do we really know now that these incidents, all these shooting incidents happen? Sheriff Pyman just alluded to it. Mm -hmm. The sheriff's office cannot be there in time to protect you. Calling 911 is what every one of these shooting incidents did. Did they get there in time to stop it? No, we have to have uh, availability to arms. We are the militia, as, as mentioned in uh, as exemplified by the right of Paul Revere and as mentioned in, in the Second Amendment. We the people. What better way to do this than by defending neighbors, defending neighbors and teachers being involved in this process to make sure our children are safe. Anybody who pretends that more gun control or getting rid of high capacity guns or assault rifles, which is a misnamed thing anyway, anybody who pretends to you that you're going to be safer that way is a liar. And what is the response time in cities where you're not allowed to carry a gun like Chicago? What's the response time in Detroit that's collapsing yeah. where if you don't have a firearm, uh, you could be killed? I, I've yeah, read stories where they don't respond for five hours. I think in one case, not till the next day on a murder. Yeah. Well, there was a Williams girl in Washington, D.C. who sued because the police weren't there in time to protect her. And that's when they came up with this case law that said, well, you can't. Even though they were incompetent, you can't sue them for it and get money. They have no lawful or legal obligation to protect you. Okay, then you protect yourself. And, and now Washington, D.C. has the case, a, a Supreme Court case that says they don't have an obligation to protect you, and we're going to take away your uh, ability to protect yourself. 
That's absurd. Uh, in my book, uh, the, Ma the Magic of Gun Control, we list all those problems with that. Yes, Magic of Gun Control portrays the truth about what's going on today, and I wrote it a year ago. And so the magic of gun control is simply this. There is no magic in gun control. You have to protect yourself. And the Second Amendment is a guarantee that will, the government will stay out of the issue of regulating your right to keep and bear arms and your right to self-defense. Follow the Founding Fathers. Do not follow these politicians today. And I am so proud of these sheriffs that are siding with America and siding with the Constitution and siding with the Founding Fathers. And you know these issues, but I want to make sure the viewers know what's going on. You were talking about Sheriff Tim Mueller. He's from Lynn County, Oregon. Okay. Other Oregon sheriffs are standing up. He sent a letter to Joe Biden uh, in part telling him, we are Americans, we must not allow nor shall we tolerate the actions of criminals, no matter how heinous, to prompt politicians to enact laws that will infringe upon the liberties of responsible citizens. Any federal regulation enacted by Congress by executive order or by the president offending the constitutional rights rights shall not be enforced by me or my deputies, nor will I per permit the uh, enforcement of unconstitutional regulations. And that is the message. Yeah. And that's why we have this sheriff's line, do not cross image that. here. I love that. Very that, symbolic. That is so perfect. That is the, the symbolism. I love that. You guys are brilliant here. I don't know who came up with that, but you guys, uh, Alex's employees and everybody that backs him up here are absolutely brilliant. I loved when I saw that. And this is exactly the solution again. Sheriffs drawing the line, and I like how you use that because it shows the sheriff drawing the line, putting the tape up, and, and this is what every sheriff in the country should be doing. Uh, hopefully, there's about 3,100 sheriffs in the country. Hopefully, by the end of this month, we're going to have about half of them on board with uh, defending you, defending your rights, and defending the Constitution, and becoming true oath keepers, and standing for the Constitution, keeping their word. Can you imagine that, that we're actually putting the oath of office first now and that we have sheriffs that will keep their word despite the pressures from Washington, D.C. to do just the opposite. And a lot of these sheriffs have said they're really ticked off that, that Barack Obama is trying to make criminals out of their citizens who simply own some of these weapons that they want to make criminal. What really concerns me also is that we still have Hillary Clinton and others working on a small arms treaty with the United Nations. So where does that take us? They're trying to take small arms through in, uh, initiatives at the United Nations. United Nations troops are already here in America. Are they going to unleash them and have them come get all the guns? Because this pretty much puts all the guns on the list. And now we have sheriffs saying, you're not gonna do that here. We don't care what laws you pass. You want to play with those little things in Washington, D.C.? That's fine. But you're not doing it in my county. As long as I'm the sheriff here, we will draw the line in the sand, and we draw the line with freedom. And again, it's the best of times. It's the worst of times. Yes. Obama did his 23 executive orders this week. Just an outrage, but he's not done. They're doing this legislation. Yes. Uh, they're going to twist arms in Congress so they can get either the assault weapons ban or new background checks, whatever it is. We know it infringes let's, because it's... Let's look at what you're saying there. I want to I focus on that. It's a very valid point. Look what Obama is doing right now. He's a lame duck president. He hasn't even started his second term yet, and he has started this much gun control, and he hasn't even started his second term yet? Yeah. What do you think's coming in the, in the next year or two? He's announcing, he's made it clear. I don't know why he got back in, and I don't know how we did this, uh, and we can always talk about that, but he's in there, and we have now a solution exemplified by these brave sheriffs keeping their word, these Oath Keeper sheriffs, these CSPOA sheriffs. Again, get to our website, CSPOA.org, and become a member, become part of this solution. It's working, folks. We told you guys it would work. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I mean, you know, sometimes I got to admit it almost sounds dry to talk about this constitutional uh, sheriff approach. But no, it's about that line in the sand. It's about it jurisdiction. Is. The founders were genius in that they tried to separate powers. They tried to create buffers. They tried yeah. to pr create uh, firewalls so that you couldn't overtake the whole system all at once. You would have to buy off everyone in the system, and you can't buy off the sheriffs, right. not all of them. Exactly. And I want to say to Sheriff Simpson, uh, Sheriff Amerson, and 
and Alabama and some of you others that, that are pro-Obama on this thing. You want to talk about the law? Let's talk about the law. You could give all the statistics about guns till hell freezes over. You can argue about those, even though it's very clear, like in uh, Professor Lott's book, more guns equal less crime, period. Look at the statistics in America. And look where gun crimes are the worst, Chicago, Detroit, Washington, D.C., New York, and where guns are most available uh, and there's no gun control, gun crime is at its lowest. However, that doesn't matter. You look at the Constitution. You took an oath to it. And quite frankly, what Barack Obama is doing and all these other gun grabbers is against the law. Gun control in the United States of America is against the law. And for any of you to go along with Barack Obama or any other proposal to limit access to guns by law-abiding Americans is a crime. It's against the law. It is, and it's so sickening what vultures they are seizing upon this tragedy. We all know it was underreported, but it was in the news that Feinstein mm -hmm. was meeting with the ATF yep. on these new regulations, her new assault weapons ban, yep. on the day before the day, the week of the election. They were waiting right. for something like Sandy Hook to happen, and like right. vultures, they sweep, swooped in, and on the backs of dead children, it's just it's nauseating. The exploitation that they have uh, taken advantage of to, to promote this gun control agenda is just absolutely shameless. I've been fighting Dianne Feinstein ever since I did the Brady Bill. She was a big supporter of it. And Charles Schumer, another one from New York, I debated him on CBS Morning News one time way back when. We've been fighting these people for so long, and now they, they've been kind of silent. But now this uh, Aurora happens, and then now Sandy Hook, and they jump on it like hungry vultures. And that's exactly what these people are. They're lawless. These people have sworn to follow the Constitution. Are they doing it? And yet we have sheriffs saying that we should be on their side? No. We'll support the good sheriffs who are standing against this. I want to talk about your case study, how you took it to the Supreme Court and fought. But first, I just want to point out, they are such hypocrites. Uh, Feinstein had a concealed carry. Yeah. Uh, Schumer, all these guys have. Uh, but more than that, Obama weeping at the press conferences. Did you see the clip where after Alex went on Piers Morgan, his guests the next day say, oh, we ought to go shoot Alex shoot with Alex. the semi-auto. They've called for murdering the NRA board, uh, the NRA president. I thought these people were for peace. Now. Say shooting the NRA president. There's a video game out. Imagine if, if a conservative put that out against Barack Obama or even somebody else. I mean, they would be arresting them. But they're crying shame because the NRA points out that Obama's children go to school under armed guard. So? But they're calling for murder of people who want it's uh, true, isn't it? to uphold they, the Second Amendment. Do. His children do go oh, to sure. school under armed guard. And many of them yeah. do, yeah. Yeah. So come on, let's let's get real here. No, it's it's such a joke. But you know what I'm telling people now is don't do what I do or or what I did. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing the sheriffs not filing lawsuits. And I'm telling them, do not file suits on this. Draw the line, say no. Back when I did it was 1994. I didn't see any other way out at the time. But there is not time nor money to do what I did. We we don't have the time to, uh, the, the window is so small for us to take this stand now, like you said, worst of times, best of times. Mm -hmm. We have to take advantage of this time that we have and this opportunity to stand right now. We have to fight it right now. Don't take it to court. That will cost a lot of time and a lot of money, and they'll keep doing this more and more. They'll just do more. We need sheriffs doing the answer just right now what it is, and that is standing and saying no, draw the line, you're not coming across that line, freedom, absolute American freedom. Hey, maybe we need a Nancy Reagan campaign, just say no, just it'll, say no. it'll work a lot better than saying no to the drug war, uh, which was you know manufactured for failure. We need to say no to tyranny, no to infringement. That's right. Shout on infringe, it's, it's, it's extremely clear. Pretty, pretty simple to follow if you read it. And if you have any question about the first part, reference to the militia, look up what the militia was and what it is now. It's still volunteer citizens. It's still we the people. Well, how many founders said, who is the militia? Are we not the militia? The militia is us. There's yes. various, uh, there's various Mason, versions. It's quoted but. in my book. Uh, George Mason said, I asked, sir, what is the militia? He said, the whole body of the people. And then he gave the second part. To disarm the people is the best and most effectual way to enslave them. 
and your politicians are trying to enslave the, enslave the American people with all this gun control, and we have good, honest American sheriffs that are trying to prevent it. And a couple here and there, sheriffs, political sheriffs, that are saying, oh, we have to go along with that. Oh, oh no, we don't. Hell no. This is America. We respect the rights and freedoms of every individual, and there is a legal process by which to amend the Constitution. And these politicians are saying they don't have to do it, they don't have to follow it, they can just violate the law with impunity. No, 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 that's not America. But I'm saying you can't violate the Second Amendment anyway. Self-defense is a natural right. Even if you got rid of the Second Amendment, I mean, a you single, still have the right. A single That's cell right. organism has self-defense. That is correct. Are we going to be lower than animals? That's correct. The Second Amendment only guaranteed what we already had before our country was founded. You know, the Second Amendment didn't give us the right to keep and bear arms. So you're absolutely correct. But if they want to get try to get rid of the Second Amendment, there is a lawful way to do it. But I still, even if they did, I still have the right to keep and bear arms. But as you know, Sheriff, the whole Bill of Rights, we fought an entire war that they said could never be won against the British. Correct. Uh, it took, what, eight years. Correct. Uh, then they had the whole battle over getting the Constitution together. All the founding fathers from di the different colonies, now states, argued over what was best. Right. And they still said this is not good enough. Tyranny will still crop up. It is virtually inevitable. We demand yeah. the Bill of Rights or yes. we won't ratify the Constitution. Yep. And that was George Mason, Patrick Henry, and, and other fine founders. Yeah. You, you know, the biggest radical who demanded the, the Bill of Rights was Patrick Henry. Yeah. You know, some of the founders even said, hey, Patrick, you're such a, uh, a right-wing extremist, you know, you're the same, same thing we get called all the time. And, and sure enough, though, they had the, uh, uh, re, re, they reconvened the Constitutional Convention two years after the Constitution was founded, and they said, we must have a Declaration of Rights. And the, what I really love about it is they argued about some of them, not on the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. That was automatic to them. They knew what it meant to freedom. They knew that uh, it would be the ultimate check and balance and that we the people would always be in charge. How could we ever be in charge? if we have to ask permission to own a gun. I found government. the same thing, because I reviewed as many quotes as I could in the last two weeks. Yeah. Doesn't matter who the founder was, how much I might disagree with some of their stances right. individually. Right. Could not find one against the Second Amendment. They, they all, all have their all own statements. Agreed on the Second Amendment. And most of them have multiple statements. It's True. just incredible. Uh, especially Patrick Henry and Thomas Jefferson. Mm -hmm. yeah. But even Alexander Hamilton, I disagree with his stance on central government oh, and banking. Totally. He still completely 100% believed in the Second individual Amendment. right to bear arms. Yeah, Hamilton was a, a kind of a liberal back in those days and, and supported a, a big central government. But, you know, uh, the, the other founding fathers won out. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Hamilton would be turning over in his grave if he could see what's going on today. He would never support this big of a government. This government is out of control. And folks, I'm telling you right now, there is a solution. Sheriff by sheriff and county by county, we take back American freedom. It's amazing, Sheriff. I mean, we really have been talking, well, you've been talking about it, but I've been interviewing you, other people have, and this has always been your message, but now it is timely, it's important. Yeah. Uh, many more sheriffs vow not to enforce the federal gun control laws. The when we had one them. sheriff stand up, <laughs> one police chief, it became a flood of sheriffs saying, we stand with him, this is a clear violation of the oath to the Constitution. Right. And so we're not going to infringe. Right. And if we send that message from enough counties, even the feds, are going to have to back off. And, and a lot of the feds will go along with the sheriffs. And a lot of the federal agents, I know FBI agents, that totally support these sheriffs. And they don't support Barack Obama. They don't support gun control. They, there's a lot of good people that work for the federal government. Our beef is not necessarily with them. But again, this is a peaceful solution, folks. Join it. Let's stand together. Let's be part of this. This is a very historical time for us. And let me, tell, let me add this. This is probably the most critical time. No, I'm not going to say probably. This is absolutely the most critical time in American history since the Civil War. This, I'm not kidding. This is the most critical time. We are the generation right now deciding if we're going to go along with a communist agenda that's going on in Washington, D.C. right now, or if we're going to maintain and preserve our constitutional republic. This is America. We have fighters now standing, boots on the ground, sheriffs that have joined this movement. Everything that you've been asking for on this program with Alex and all the people that support InfoWars and this, this network and Genesis, 
we have a solution in progress. Join it and stand behind your sheriff. If your sheriff hasn't joined this yet, call him and get him going on this or her. You uh, uh, out in Sheriff Simpson's County in Oregon, you need to set her straight. She works for you. We've got a lot of good sheriffs in Oregon. We've got a lot of good sheriffs all across this country who are realizing and answering the call to step up and stop this. Now, we need to get behind them. That's powerful, Sheriff. Let me ask you this extra question, though. Uh, obviously, we know a lot of people are going to say no, stand their ground to an outright ban. Do we also have uh, the posing tyranny of a piecemeal approach where, oh, it's only a background check. Oh, it's only a CDC study on gun control. What do they have to do with anything? Oh, it's only Obamacare doctors asking their patients if they have guns in their homes right. and then profiling them supposedly on long mental health lines. Uh, what do you see coming along those lines if only the executive orders. I are see pursued. exactly what Hitler did. That's what I see. Hitler didn't do it all in one day. He, do you know what he did first? He had registration. Mm -hmm. And he said this will make us safer. He had the same promise that we're doing now. And did he line up children to help him with his little propaganda schemes? Absolutely. If you look at what Barack Obama is doing and you look what Adolf Hitler did, you draw your own conclusions. I'm not going to draw them for you. You draw your own conclusions. Look at what's going on. This piecemeal approach and this Fabianistic uh, debauchery that uh, Washington, D.C. uses, and especially Barack Obama, he's an expert at it. He's doing exactly what we knew he was going to do. And now, because of this, you can't even hardly buy ammo, ammo and guns anymore because we know this guy's a gun grabber. We know this guy's a communist. We know who he's acting like. And, and by the way, gun control is still against the law in America. You know what? They didn't have that back in those days. And England doesn't have a Second Amendment. We do here. Our founding fathers knew what they were talking about. And this incremental approach to taking away our rights has got to stop right now. And finally, there's local officials waking up and seeing what's going on. And this thing about a background check, nope, I oppose those too. You know why? Because that's an infringement on law-abiding citizens. When don't fall into any of their traps about, oh, well, isn't this a good idea? Maybe some of them are good ideas, but I'm not going to destroy the Second Amendment because somebody has some good idea about what they think I should do to go through these cattle shoots or that doctors should turn in people who own guns. As soon as a doctor asks me if I own a gun, it'll be the last time I go to that doctor and I'll answer him, well, probably with a single finger salute. I'm not telling anybody what kind of guns I own. I thought that was a mistake that Alex made on Pierce, Pierce Morgan telling me he has guns. I don't care. Pierce, it's none of your business what kind of gun I own. It's none of your business if I own a gun at all. And what kind of gun I own is up to me. You know why? Because I'm a law-abiding citizen and I'm a Texan. Uh, but it's the man in the arena, and I salute Alex for that appearance because he put him on notice. Oh, yeah. And really, I think, broke the trance because there's so many <laughs> good Second trance. Amendment people, and, but like they that. they go along with that smooth talking, everybody's calm. This is not a time to be calm, and that doesn't, again, that doesn't mean violent, but it does no. mean stand your ground for the rights. And, and Alex, you know, he said, if you try to do this, 1776 is coming back. Absolutely. Absolutely true. But you know what, folks? We have a, a window of opportunity here, a window of opportunity here to keep this peaceful. And if you get your sheriffs on board, what these other sheriffs are doing, these sheriffs are guaranteeing that we can do this in a peaceful manner. What, what more do you want? Get involved in this process for him. It's the sake. best solution. And people we are going to have to do more. Let me reiterate. We have to do more. You guys are doing more. Alex is doing more. I'm doing more. My son is doing more. My wife is doing more. We spend 15 to 20 hours a day on this every day. We're asking you now to join with us in this holy cause of liberty, as Patrick Henry called it. This is the holy cause of liberty today, and standing together and defending freedom is as important today as it was in 1776. Let's make it to where we don't force our children and grandchildren to have to fight this when we can stand now.
Thank you, Sheriff. I just want to quickly back you up that when you said Nazi, that is not an inflammatory word. Hitler's not. All these tyrants disarmed their populations and then created genocide. The American Revolution was started over disarmament at Lexington. Right. You and I know we were there right. for the starting uh, meeting of the Oath Keepers, right. that April 19th, 1775 moment. Yep. And we have to say no to disarmament. It just goes hand in hand with tyranny. And so we appreciate what we're doing. Again, the S. CSPOA DVD is out. We're going to carry it. We're going to try to get a deal on that. And it's a complete educational resource with yourself. Yeah, every one of you should get that DVD set. Every one of you will see the actual convention we had with our constitutional sheriffs, some chiefs of police and county commissioners. You want all of those people on board. You need to see this DVD for yourself. Get, in, get involved and, and uh, you can get all of these uh, products right here at uh, Alex's. But it's more than a DVD because that education on the sheriffs is why we're seeing them standing up now. Yeah. And it's the stuff that you and Stuart Rhodes and so many others have done. It's, it's amazing and I, I appreciate first, your work. I actually first wrote about sheriffs and peace officers keeping their oath in 1994. Yeah, that's how long I've been fighting for this. And seeing it happen now is so gratifying. And I thank you for bringing this to the American people. Thank you, Sheriff Mack. Yeah. And that is all for tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. If you like the message we're spreading, you could support us financially at PrisonPlanet.tv. It also gives you access to an information library you could share with up to 10 other people. You could buy the books and videos, too, to support us. If you don't like what we're doing, you better go do it your way, but you better do it now because the hour's upon us. We have to fight to preserve and restore this republic. Get out there now and spread the word. Let's stop them from infringing on our rights. We'll be back next week. Good night.